Software development has a lot to do with compliance. Um, compliance is really about having a business comply to mandates, whether they're internally imposed or external from a regulator. And as you know, every company basically runs on software. They're inseparable these days. Every, you'd be hard pressed to find any business function whatsoever, any business process, that doesn't include software in some way, shape, or form. So when you're talking about compliance, it means changing the way you do business to comply, and that means both the people side of it in terms of procedures and processes, etc. cetera, uh, but certainly it also means about software, and to change software, we have to go through software development. Why is it hard to achieve compliance in IT? Wow. Um, well, anything that's complex is difficult, <laughs> and regulatory compliance is incredibly complex. The regulations are complex. When you think of a regulator imposing a regulation, there isn't just one, there's multiple. If you're a globally operating company, now I have multiple jurisdictions and multiple regulators, and not just regulators, standard bodies as well. And these regulations don't, they're not static. They keep changing. There's updates continually. They come in various forms and flavors, some abstract, some prescriptive. So that's just one side of the complexity equation. The other side, of course, is that technology is changing at a dizzying pace. So IT is struggling just to keep up with business demands uh, and the rate of change of technology, not to mention all the regulatory complexities that I just spoke of. So it's an incredibly complex environment. That's why it's so difficult. And it's not made any easier with the tools people are using today to try to solve that complexity problem. They're really, it's really tooling that uh, hasn't changed a whole lot since, you know, the 1980s. Many organizations are literally using word processors, documents, spreadsheets to try to tackle this incredibly complex problem, and they're falling behind, quite frankly. AI has incredible opportunity when it comes to regulatory compliance. Uh, basically, wherever there's large volumes of data that we're having to deal with and manage and make decisions based on, there's opportunity for AI to help streamline that, make it more effective and more consistent. Uh, and regulatory compliance is no different. So, and that's both on the, what I call the input side. So having to become aware of and ingest and interpret and understand what's being asked of us and what's being expected of us as an organization in terms of compliance. Huge volumes of data there where the regulatory content itself and all of the updates and it has to map into the business objects that we have, of which there are so many, and the risks and controls and so on. Um, that's a huge uh, opportunity in many different facets, but then also on the output side, as I would call it. So the whole verification, validation, regulatory reporting side, again, mountains of operational data and evidence that we have to deal with, sift through, narrow down to provide the answers that the regulators need to be able to do their job. Uh, new tooling investments for regulatory compliance? Absolutely. Um, the technologies that organizations, even large name brand organizations are using today to help solve that compliance problem, uh, honestly, are several generations out of date, to be perfectly frank. Uh, there are so many new innovative technologies that can, in essence, if you boil it down, take the huge burden and overhead of clerical activity and dealing with data volumes off the shoulders of the people and let them focus on uh, the things they probably should be focusing on, which is the fundamental decision making and confirmation of the decisions being made and directing traffic, if you will. Um, but so many hours are being spent by these people um, on these what I call clerical activities um, and, of course, humans make errors. Um, so, that, so, so tremendous opportunity for the tooling today to basically offload that, immediately driving efficiencies and streamlining all of these compliance efforts and making them more effective. It's 
an organization has achieved compliance implies they're done, they're never done, <laughs> right? The, it, it changes and it never stays still. The business changes, uh, the regulations are changing, the market that that business is servicing is changing, and in the face of these change, the problem just turns immediately to maintaining compliance and maintaining it in an efficient way. It, there are costs associated obviously in attaining it, but also maintaining it over time. And you want those to be um, as low as possible, but also as uh, these investments that you're making to be as effective as possible. So once you've supposedly attained it or achieved it, you have to maintain that over time and you have to do it in a very effective uh, and efficient manner. So once again, there's op many opportunities for tooling to, to help out with that. And honestly, tooling can literally cut across silos that are, exist in many organizations, deal with distributed organizations much, much more effectively than the means that they're doing it today in the area of compliance. Uh, so once again, there's just several opportunities there to apply technology to help make uh, the maintenance of compliance a lot more efficient and effective and put you on the road to optimizing it over time. Um, how does the compliance problem differ across industry? Wow. Um, well, at its base, compliance, again, is the same across all industries in terms of you're just being asked to comply with certain mandates or requirements, if you want to call them that. Um, but if you, I don't know, I'll pick a couple of industries that I know we serve uh, intensely, and that's financial services and banking. And then another industry that we serve is healthcare, pharmaceutical, life science uh, type industries. And on the uh, financial side, uh, the, the volume of regulations that have to be complied with and the more specifically, the rate of change and updates uh, is staggering. And again, that happens cross industry. So just having to keep up with it. And of course, if something were to fail, I mean, there certainly are consequences to that. Um, in most cases, you know, monetary consequences. And, and, and so if people will weigh the options and, and invest whatever they feel is prudent, depending on their risk tolerance levels, uh, toward compliance. When we deal with uh, life sciences and healthcare pharmaceuticals, I mean, literally lives are on the line. So compliance uh, takes on a much, you know, more sobering <laughs> meaning when it comes to the consequences you're, you're thinking of. The volume tends to be as high, the rate or pace of change tends not to be because there's a lot of deliberation, consideration, proving of, of these uh, regulatory requirements and standards and guidelines uh, that needs to take place. So, so we have a, hopefully have a much better sense that we've got it right before we put it into practice. So it tends to be a little more stable, volumes high, consequences staggering. Uh, the financial services, high volume again, pace of change is just is, is out of this world and trying to keep up is a, is a massive, huge challenge. So every organization, you know, has needs for software. We talked about that before. The building of software today, uh, certainly in ISVs or independent solution providers, software manufacturers uh, of the world, is agile has been agile for years. In large-scale IT, every organization is in some transition to agile approaches, and that's where agile really stems from: is that software development side. And what we're seeing is uh, as they transition to Agile and start to become successful, the issues they start to deal with now is scaling Agile up because they want to scale it, do Agile on a much larger scale and get into the more business critical initiatives, et cetera, uh, in, in the development of, and fielding and provisioning of software. And that Agile principle, the set of Agile principles and mindset is starting to evolve outside of software development in a pretty quick way into business functions now. Certainly a lot of marketing organizations, for example, are executing or applying many of the Agile principles and it's starting to evolve into the business. So the business is going through 
multiple transformations today, certainly a huge digital transformation, but also an agile transformation in the way in which they work, all for good reason, all for the same reason. So in that whole evolving, changing landscape, we still have regulatory compliance that we have to deal with. Um, there are ways and means to deal with it, but as anything scales up and you start to get complexity, um, simply relying on humans doing it manually with documents, spreadsheets, etc., and emails starts to break down really, really fast and becomes very costly and ineffective. And in the end, for the business, risky. So applying appropriate technologies becomes absolutely crucial. It's a prerequisite, to be honest with you, in, in these large organizations. Uh, and our technology in particular was designed to help organizations go through that transformation from traditional gated, milestone-driven processes to more iterative, uh, flexible, agile processes, both on the software side and blending into the business side as that organization evolves and it takes into account how to do compliance in that changing landscape. How can highly regulated industries like pharma and healthcare take advantage of technology? Um, there's lots of opportunity for this. Um, again, in the healthcare, pharma, life sciences industries, uh, consequences are dire if we get it wrong, clearly. So we need to be paying attention and compliance is hugely important for those reasons. Uh, once again, it's, it tends to be well-intentioned, but very heavy document-based processes that organizations tend to go through. Uh, we can still attain or achieve that level of rigor, but it doesn't have to be with, as I say, 1980, 1970s technology documents. Uh, there are much more effective ways to do it that can lessen and reduce the human error at the same time lessen and reduce the overhead uh, associated with this uh, as we digitize or apply modern tooling to this problem. So all the content which is in the package that I call a document, if you strip away the package and just look at the content, that's what we're dealing with in the tooling. And then to help the transition, because we understand it'll be a while, uh, if you still need a document, that's fine. Hit a button, it'll generate the document exactly as it looked in years past. Come corporate format, only it's accurate, it's up to date, it's current, it has the latest information, and it's all integral because the work of maintaining the content has been done in the platform. Uh, and then, you know, a review and approve cycles with electronic signature, with meaning of signature, compliant with 21 CFR Part 11. I mean, all of that can be done digitally and electronically today. Uh, with the, ad, the aid or addition of managed automated workflow with notifications. It just makes the whole experience much more uh, efficient, much more effective, less opportunity for human error, and much easier, in fact, for those who need to validate. The internal auditors, we can just see the audit trail, and we can come in and do uh, automated queries to get the information we need instantly rather than turning it into some you know, forensic science activity and try to deduce it from evidence that we have lying around. Um, so a uh, huge opportunity for applying technology, especially in the life sciences, healthcare industries on compliance. Uh, there's definitely technologies out there to help specifically with uh, GXP compliance. Um, so good practices, compliance in life sciences. So for example, our, our solution, uh, Regulatory Change Manager, uh, is available specifically tuned to GXP. So by that I mean we access all the GXP related information, regulations, guidelines, uh, and standards associated with it, automatically bring them in, break them down, make them manageable, bring in updates on an ongoing basis. And this whole platform we have that takes you right through from that sourcing of the information uh, through interpretation, assessment, uh, remediation, uh, internal audit support, et cetera. So end-to-end so -end -end with all the end-to-end -end mapping, all of this can be provided uh, in a hosted environment that's been qualified and validated, okay? 
Um, so taking even that burden, and that, that's a huge burden in terms of both cost and time of people to validate and qualify a, a system internally or on site, uh, um, but uh, also it puts you behind the curve when it comes to taking updates of the software. So our platform has regular updates with new capabilities and features that would be hugely beneficial for these organizations, but because they'd have to revalidate, they often are one, two, sometimes even three years behind. Well, by hosting it, you can streamline that validation and qualification um, so you can stay up to date and current on the most latest release, take advantage of those new capabilities, not to mention offload all that burden and, and, uh, and, and the cost.